Hi guys, Dan here. Um, Blues Abroad, uh, Pommies review time. Uh, so it's just a quick um, brief outline of what we're going to do today. We're going to discuss the 22. Uh, they've been dropped uh, just about two hours ago, I think. Um, and what I do is I, I run a little thing called TPI with um, the team. So if you're familiar with chests, um, there's a thing called ELO that they use to judge their um, competitors. Uh, ELO is a sophisticated, if you will, prediction method. It's a rated method, a bit like the ICC cricket players rankings. It, it correlates dozens and dozens of variables um, from player strength, moves, matchups, radi radi ra. Um, I've adapted that and come up with my own algorithm. It takes into account over 2,200 different variables. Everything from weather, time of day, where it is, disposal efficiency, kicking efficiency, width of the pitch, length of the pitch, matchups, height, weight, ratio, radi radi ra. And it gives you a thing called TPI, um, which is variable from team to team. And kind of gives a win probability, gives us something to assess. It oscillates around 78% fact, which is pretty high. If you gamble, they always say if you're 49% as a gambler, you're a gambler. If it's 60, you know something. And if it's above, you're usually onto something. Um, so we take on Brisbane, as we know, a little brief outline of the game. So Carlton have been in the news for all the wrong reasons. It's come to a head this week. We've lost Bolton. Whether you agree or disagree with that decision, um, we must move forward. And it's a real chance for this team now, clean slate. A lot of these players are in the shop window, if it will, whether it be to stay with us or whether it will be to move on to elsewhere. Also, our coach is in the shop window. You think you'd say the aim this year was a minimum of five, six wins to get to year one. And we've got one. So if he can get four or five of these next games, he's really in the shop window. So it's a really exciting time about Carlton. Um, a little brief outline on Teague for those who don't know him. He was at the Bullens, um, the Northern Blues as they're now known. And a real style of his football was he really likes to attack the corridor. It's very run and gun type football, real direct. Uh, kind of like a, a hybrid of, you know, the Collingwood Richmond type game. Really defined by high pressure, which makes me sound like Bolton. But it is really defined by pressure, really pressure based, very quick. It runs um, thanks to You Know Who You Are, who managed to send me some uh, data from um, the Northern Blues when he was there. It oscillates at about a two to one kick ratio, which is fairly high for the AFL world. Uh, a real strong kicking team would be like your Collingwoods, your um, Eagles. They're around that 1.7 mark, but this was 2.65. So. Real kick heavy, kick, kick focused. They cover a lot of background, a lot of ground quick, quickly. And what that usually does is it's kind of a high risk, high reward. So he, he really likes a high defensive line as well. Really encourages teams to hit him on the cap, on, on over the back, looking for a turnover really quickly to really transition from defence into a forward line. So for Boltonites, as I like to call them, who have got used to our two to three years. It's a real culture shift. So we're no longer, I wouldn't expect to see this slow plodding punt down the wing. I'd expect to see switches. I'd expect to see quick one twos. I'd really expect to see that ball moving at a great rate of knots. Um, kind of a circa Melbourne in that prelim final last year against Geelong. Just really, really, really direct football. So it's really exciting. So that's why for me, I was not shocked to see Lockie O'Brien come in. Very Teaguey style at the Bullens. Small, evasive. And if you've seen him at the Northern Blues, he has got a really penetrating kick when he has the time to use it. So I'd expect to see him on that half forward flank really get some width and time to show us what he can do. Um, well, with that being said, let's get straight into the nitty gritty of the team. So here are the teams. So thankfully, due to totally skiving, we managed to uh, get this. So here we are. So the back line is probably not too much of a surprise for us. We've got, uh, there we are, we've got Nick Newman, Jacob Wheater and Lockie Plowman uh, up against Charlie Cameron, McStay and Lewis Taylor. Um, now Newman, obviously, been really, really good for Carlton this year, been really consistent performer for us. 
really um, getting things done down that back, real reliable. Um, playing in the back pocket today, probably coming up against Charlie Cameron. Um, tough matchup. Cameron's been in really good form, um, really um, starting to hit that wonderful form that, if you remember, a couple of years ago he had. So it's going to be a tough um, ask of him. Um, you would say probably Brisbane have got the advantage there, but it depends which Charlie Cameron turns up. So as we know with Charlie Cameron, he can sometimes be mercurial, um, but he can also sometimes be very haphazard. Um, got 20 goals this year, going at 1.9 uh, with the... So, I mean, it's, he, he likes his goals. Also really defensive, uh, averaging just shot three tackles. So a tough matchup all round for both sides. Um, so I, I'd expect to see... Newman struggle, but I, I'd like to see he's very tough once he's in the tackle vicinity. People seem to seem tackled. So um, it'd be an interesting matchup. You've got Wheater in as well against McStay. McStay's been in real good form for Brisbane of late. A lot of people talk about Hipwood, but for me, McStay's the pick of the bunch. As you can see, their TPI rating of 7.5, um, which is really high, it basically means he's in that upper echelon. 1.2 goals a game. He's really taken a lot of marks though. It's over 2.5 marks inside 50. Tough ask. We are in. We know he's been in great form. Um, and as it shows there, 7.6 is TPI rating. So you can see these matchups are telling us that he should have the edge as Newman should have the edge against Cameron. Uh, and then we've got Plowman versus Taylor. Taylor, I don't really rate him. He had a good game last week. I'd expect Lockie Plowman, if he uses that body well, one thing about Plowman is he, he kind of plays in front of the man, anticipating. If he goes back shoulder, uses his body well, he should win that matchup. So, I mean, that's the back line there. It's fairly standard against their forward line. There's more problem areas for Carlton, um, but that's not one of them I wouldn't have said. But now the halfback line, really interesting this. Love him or hate him, but Levi Caswell has been phenomenal. Now, he's up against a really mobile forward. If you've seen Eric Hipwood play, he's a bit like a Tay version of our Charlie. Probably not as mobile as our Charlie, not as quick, but very awkward. Um, not a good year by his standards, though. 3.8, 3.38 TPI rating, which is basically telling us that it's dropped from last year. It was 6.2. So, good matchup for Caswell. Um, Caswell... Is second in the competition of intercept marks in games played in a key position. So that's three games so far. He would actually be second. He'd be behind Tom Stewart. So that's that's huge. So, I mean, real good matchup for Carlton. And obviously the welcome return of Daisy there on the halfback flank. Up against um, his opposite man, Taylor. Um, should be... Uh, against him, um, that's a typo, McCarthy. He's against Lincoln McCarthy. Should be a, a tough game. Uh, 1.49 for McCarthy. He's, he's what he gets. There's a reason that he was discharged before. He, he, he's got the ability to kick four goals, but I think Daisy should have his number. Cam Rainer versus Marchbank. That, that's tough. The stats saying that Marchbank should get the job done. Uh, I don't think the TPI has taken into account um, Rainer's. It doesn't really rate these players that have one blinder every so often. So if Rainer's in the money... I'd fancy Rainer, but I really do think that that backline really does hold up. And now this is where it gets dangerous. You've got Hugh McCluggage, Lockie O'Neill and Mitch Robinson, former Blue, returning. They're, they're really heavily rated Brisbane's midfield, and that's because they're very cohesive. They work as a brilliant unit, something that our team doesn't do. So if we look at that, McCluggage versus Satterfield. Satterfield still trying to find his way in AFL football, a negative one rating. These ratings do punish players who turn the ball over, don't hit targets, have clangers, loose possessions, particularly passes that get the next pass into trouble. And as you can see, Satterfield there really being punished, negative one. You can see the AFL rating there, ranks him as 609th best player in the comp. It's an issue. Um, Hugh McLuggage has been really resurgent. I really do like Hugh McLuggage's work. Um, you've got Cripps as well against Neil. Neil's probably, you could argue, in Brownlow form. Uh, we've got him running here in our stats as actually top of the uh, Brownlow by round five. So if anyone has flutters on the earlier rounds, Lockie O'Neill, solid footballer. Uh, up against our Crips, who again, top three of our Brownlow by our camp. His TPI has gone down the last three games. It rewards consistency. And as we know, he's been really short. 11.75, though he's still ripper. 
Um, I'd expect Crips to really come out, make a stand this week. So I fancy Crips winning that battle in the midfield, really getting it. I don't expect Neil and Crips to play on together. But you never know, it is football, weirder things have happened. And Connor's um, on the wing. Uh, I like that matchup, I really do like Connors. 2.38, he's really going up as well. Um, that is one of the highest rated players from Carlton who's gone up from last year. Really resurged since all these injuries, really locking his place in. So, I mean, that should be an interesting matchup. We know what we get with Mitch, he's going to irritate, he's going to nag. Onto the half forward line. And um, this should be really interesting, this Charlie kerner has got Darcy Gardner, so you would fancy Gardner and Witherden to switch up with him. Really do think Charlie's going to have a big day. Um, as you can see, his TPI rating saying he's better than the entire defence. I really do fancy it. Uh, as you can see, Lockie, um, he's got a negative two. Oh, no, sorry, he's got a 2.3 rating. Really suits. He's got a, he used to have a negative. The way that Teague works, this TPI also fluctuates with tactical. to analyse tactical shift of the balance. So he should be really positive in this. I'd look to see Lockie to find that space and deliver that ball into Harry. Um, Gibbons on the other flank. He's got a negative 1.6 rating. Tough with new players coming from the rookie with a lot of VFL form because he had a real high VFL rating. We have an algorithm that kind of punishes them from coming into the AFL. Now when it's a step up. So really tough matchup there for uh, Gibbons. He, he, he gets hurt in this. His TPI has gone up quite a lot. But see, I think up against Wyvern and Answorth, he's really going to have to show his soul. He needs to get some ball. I expect our half-forward flankers to really find some space. And if that happens, Gibbons is going to have a really good game. He's, he's my smoky for best on um, next week, this weekend. I really do fancy it. Now, the full forward line's where the magic happens for Carlton. Ed Kerno back in there in the pocket to really lock it in. Real conducive of Teague's game plan. Um, Harry McKay, we know how good he is. He's up against probably the best young fullback in the comp in Harris Andrews. As you can see, their TPIs kind of mirror each other. Should be a tough matchup. Should be a great game between them two. And I'd fancy McGovern as Teague's uh, favourite to do really well there. Um, and the Rook and followers, Sam Walsh and Fisher. I don't expect them to be the followers throughout the game against Zorko and Lines. You would say that this is advantage them at the moment if we take this team at first value although i don't expect it to cruz has been really good as you can see just short of seven give you a rough indication brody grundy and max gone lead the way in 17 and 15. so real high numbers there and that is because cruiser offers something around the ground martin's not a ground ruckman as you can see a very low rating there of 1.76 but very solid as it is it would be conducive of teague he likes to play a quick game and walsh and fisher are up there with the quickest options on the bench though let's go over to that now we've got SPS Dow Silvani and Young Kid. Um, Kid, you'd expect to be roaming on the half back line uh, I have heard uh, this week he actually spent a bit of time with the pocket forward so that should be interesting a um, bit of experience there um, SPS TPI rating of 2.25 now you look at that bench there one thing that is noticeable is that there's a couple of negatives there. Reese Matheson and Rick Allison. Matheson is the turnover king at the moment. Really struggling with them turnovers. You look at his clang as they're quite high. Averaging about five a game. Um, so options on the bench with that Archie Smith though. There's a worry for us. Um, so let's see what that just totals in real money. So as you can see both ladder positions. We're the bottom. Them running fifth. Um, points scored were second to bottom. And you can see this is the worry for Carlton. Fourth best scoring team in the league. Have got a horrible kicking efficiency though, but that could be amplified. Um, now the points against, we're fourth in the league. They're eighth in the league, so real advantage for Carlton to kick goals. They are quite leaky down the back. Form's telling us obviously they've won three and five. We know that we don't we don't, can move on from that. Now this is a bit of a worrying statistic. One in four for Carlton at the Marvel. We've never played there. Our career, we've got a 28% win rate, so we're kind of bang on our career average. The, Brisbane have got a 22%, but they are 100% in 2019. And you can see where they were fairly even, and it's the last two quarters where Carlton really do die. Four wins and five wins in the first two quarters, five and six for them, but as the third and the fourth quarter come in, we really do struggle. 
And that could be an issue. If we can hold it together, keep it tight and be in when it comes to dancing time, we've got a chance. As you can see, unfortunately, it is saying after being played a million times, the win probability is Brisbane 52% with a predicted score of a 29 point loss. So let me know what you guys think. That's a brief overview. If there's any questions you'd like to ask, please throw them in the comments. I'm really open to explaining it a bit more in depth. Maybe if Terry wants me to do a video, I'll take you through the ins and outs. There is a review show coming. But as always, go Blues. My personal opinion is I think Carlton will get up. I think we'll flip that TPI next week or give us a boost. And I think Carlton will just edge it by six. Michael Gibbons being best on ground. Go Blues.